Let's say we have a solid disk with two masses that are hanging from it. We're going to call the masses mass 1 and mass 2. Mass 1 is going to have a mass of 1.0 kilograms. Mass 2 is going to have a mass of 2.0 kilograms. The mass of the pulley is going to be 0.5 kilograms. The radius of the pulley is going to be 0.25 meters. Look familiar? Does it look familiar at all? Okay. It's a solid disk. What we're going to figure out now is after, assuming it starts at rest, after it moves through a distance of 0 0.50 meters, what is the velocity final? And therefore, what is the acceleration? Same problem, slightly different thing we're finding, completely different approach. It's frictionless. Is there a force applied? No. Therefore, we can use what, Sarah Jane? Um, uh, one of the work equations. One of what? Well, it had to do with it was included in one of the work equations. Which one can we use? What? The conservation of energy. It's the one where the work due to the force applied was equal to zero. So we have mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. So we're going to approach this instead of using the sum of the torques, we're going to use conservation of energy because we don't have a force applied and we do not have a force of friction. Okay, this is what it looks like initially. Finally, what we've got is mass 2 is going to be down here. Mass 1 is going to be up here. So this is what it looks like initially. This is what it looks like finally because mass 1 will have gone up and mass 2 will have gone down. So, initially, what sort of energy does the system have? Tim? We do? How about there? That seems like a logical place for a zero line. What type of energy does the system have then? Talk, walk me through them. Uh, Moe. Okay. Uh, yeah, potential energy due to gravity. Does it have it? No. No. Give me another one. Uh, spring. The energy to spring. No springs. And then kinetic energy, which is the velocity. So, so the, the entire mechanical energy initial is equal to zero. Oh, okay, to zero. <laughs> what about mechanical energy final, Jenkins? Uh, what about uh, the gravitational energy? Oh, sure. We, I suppose we could include the gravitational potential energy of the pulley. It's, it's been the same on both sides. sides. It's just going to cancel out, so I really wouldn't worry about it too much. It's an interesting point. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it because it would be the same on both sides. Uh, mechanical energy, final. What sort of energy do we end with? Logan? Oh, we have energy. One. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do gravitational uh, of one, final. What else? I'm sorry, say again? No spring. No spring, true. This is not complete. We're missing something. Go ahead. It's okay. Jenkins? The rotational kinetic energy of the pulley. The kinetic energy of the pulley. Fine. Can't forget the pulley is also rotating. So what we have is 0 equals m1gh1 final plus m2gh2 final plus 1 half mass v1 final squared plus 1 half mass v2, oops, 1 mass 1 mass 2, v2 final squared plus 1 half times what is the equation for the, the rotational kinetic energy to so, Okay, so the moment of inertia of the pulley times the angular speed of the pulley squared final. We have a bunch of masses. I don't know, they're not all the same. Uh, let's let's kind of walk from left to right. We know mass one, we know g, we know h one final, we know all of these. We don't know velocity one final, but that's what we're trying to find. What's true of velocity one final versus velocity two final class? 
they're the same, yeah, they're the same. Uh, and so, but we have over here the moment of inertia of the pulley times the angular velocity final of the pulley. So let's take this out for a minute and let's look at kinetic energy rotational. That's equal to one half times the moment of inertia of the pulley times the angular velocity of the pulley. So one half times the moment of inertia of the pulley was one half times mr squared. So this is the mass of the pulley squared times omega squared. Or, if you prefer, one fourth mass of the pulley times the radius of the pulley squared times the angular velocity of the pulley squared. How is that going to help us? So, if we solve for the final um, angular strain, then we can convert that into a tangential velocity. We actually don't need to do that, but we do need to find a relationship between the tangential velocity and the angular velocity. We happen to know one. It's in our brain, it's on our equation sheet. What is that? Tangential velocity equals the radius times the angular velocity, not arc length, but angular velocity. If we square both sides, we get that the tangential velocity squared equals the radius squared times the angular velocity squared. Look at that. The tangential velocity would be the final velocity, so this equals one half or one fourth times the mass of the pulley times the final velocity squared, because this is the tangential velocity is the final velocity. So we could replace one half times the moment of inertia of the pulley times the angular velocity of the pulley with one fourth mass of the pulley times velocity final squared. So we get zero equals m1 times g times h1 final plus m2 times g times h2 final plus one half times m1 v velocity final squared plus one half times mass two times velocity final squared plus one fourth times the mass of the pulley times the final velocity squared. Uh, what are we trying to find? Final velocity? All right, so here we go. Uh, let's... I don't know, how do we want to approach this? Um, zero equals M1G H1 final plus M2G H2 final plus velocity final squared multiplied by M1 over 2 plus M2 over 2 plus M mass of the pulley over 4. Yeah. So the velocity final squared is going to be equal to the negative M1 G H1 final minus M2 G H2 final divided by mass 1 divided by 2 plus mass 2 divided by 2 plus the mass of the pulley divided by 4. Ah, uh, letters. Uh, mass 1 is 1, G is 9.8, H1 final, what is the final height of H1, Bill? I'm sorry, of mass 1? What's the final height of mass 1? Oh, no, that's the, that would be the initial height. It's okay. John helps out. Uh, 0.5 meters. 0.5 meters. Minus mass 2, which is 2, times g, which is 9.8, times what is the final height of 2, uh, Mr. Patel? The final height of mass 2. Sarah Jane, help out. Would it be negative 0.5? Could it be negative 0.5 because it's below the zero line by 0.5 meters? I plugged in the masses. What is the, what will I find the velocity final to be the square root of this giant thing? Velocity final equals? It was smaller. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't it be uh, 0.5 divided by 4? Mm. Keep doing that. Thank you. 0.5 divided by 4.
1.366, independent confirmation 1.366. Nope. Something different? No, Let, Let's get a number first, then we'll get the, uh, the question. Or? 1.736? Is that a 2 over 2? It is a 2 over 2. 1.736? Oh, sorry. We'll vote on that one. Uh, clearly, the 1.736 wins. Congratulations. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, uh, velocity final then with safe face, 1.7 meters per second squared. Mohit, you had a question? Um, yeah, how do you know how much the height change is? It simply said it goes through a distance of 0.5 meters. Oh, okay. So this one went up 0.5 meters, this one went down 0.5 meters. Yes, yeah, so you didn't do that. What? Wow. Oh, sorry. Good job. All right, so now. We, we need to figure out the acceleration. We can come all the way back. We can use a cozy old UAM equation. We have velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2A delta Y. We know uh, the, therefore, we rearrange it. We get the velocity final squared minus the velocity initial squared divided by 2 times the delta Y equals the acceleration. So the acceleration equals 1.736 squared minus the initial, which was zero to squared, divided by two times 0.5. So what was our original answer to squared? Mr. Bomb, I have a question. Yep. Yeah. You're going 0.5 up and like 0.5 down? Yeah. For like the, the entire system, how is it still 0.5? Because each object has moved 0.5. Like the whole thing is slid 0.5. Oh, okay. Like How do you know it's uniformly accelerated? Because all the forces acting on this are going to be constant, no, no none of them change. So does the acceleration work out to be 3.02? Yep. I hope it does, because that's what we got in the last problem. 